There are um, three options that you can do for the energy lab. Uh, the first one was, and this was a traditional one, was that we all went out to the stadium stairs, right? And people would run up these stairs. There's a person running, right? And the idea was that the power was uh, the potential energy they gained divided by the time. So we would all measure what this change in height was using cleverness, and then we would uh, uh, time them, and we'd do several trials of that. Uh, and then people could take their pounds and divide by 2.2 uh, or something like that and get kilograms. And uh, we could figure out your human power output. And it, it ends up being um, quite a lot. I mean, if you sprint up those stairs, you'll get, you know, on the order of a big, strong person, you'll get like 700, 800, 900 watts. Um, because, of course, it's a sprint, right? Um, but anyway, that, that's the basic idea. Uh, this is what you want to do, right, is you're going to come up with your own procedure. It doesn't have to be running up the stairs. Uh, you could do uh, bench presses. You could do pull-ups. Uh, you could uh, power is force times velocity. So you could use a force scale and exert um, some force uh, at some velocity, right? Um, I've, seen kids, uh, I've seen kids do this where they've got a starting point and an ending point, right, and they just have somebody... Whoops, that's, that person's supposed to be running, you know, there's the table there, right? Okay, but they've got, they've got somebody and they have them sprint and they figure out the distance it takes them to gain uh, kinetic energy, right? Right, and then they uh, just do that divided by time is going to be your power, right? So kinetic energy divided by time. Uh, be very careful about how you get that final velocity. Uh, if they're accelerating it's well anyway you do, do your suvat right that that seems to be the uh, a big thing but basically come up with whatever you want to do uh, you know how to calculate power uh, and you just need some human manifestation of power now, it doesn't have to be maximum power it could just be the power of somebody walking casually up the stairs or something like that okay um, this is this is what your lab is going to have to have just a brief description of the procedure don't go into great detail because um, this is you're not graded on this, right? I just need to know what it is you're doing. A diagram, I need a diagram with, with distances and things you measure, like masses and stuff. Label that stuff. Um, and then whatever formula you're using. Are you using power is mgh over t? Uh, is it is it 1 half mv squared over t? Is it uh, force times velocity, right? I, I just need to know. Right, and then an example of how you calculated the power. Just one example. You don't have to show all of them, right? And then uh, how how you calculated the uncertainty of the power output. Okay, um, and uh, I'll look at some calculations here in a second. But this is basically what you need, right? Um, so maybe jot those things down. I'm going to go to the next slide here in a sec. Um, and then two or three people could share a lab write up as long as you all work on it. I'm okay with that, right? Uh, here are some calculations, right? If your power is, and this is really typical, you just run up the stairs and, and time it, right? So you know their mass, you know this is 9.81, and that's the height change of the stairs, right? Uh, if you do this, the uncertainty of this power is to the power as the uncertainty of mass is to mass. I'm going to say G doesn't have an uncertainty, but uncertainty of h is to h plus the uncertainty of your time is to your time right so just guess what you think the uncertainty of the mass is the height could be half of the smallest unit of measure that you use time if you do multiple trials the uncertainty of that could just be the the max time minus min over two so say you did five trials you take the highest time subtract the smallest time divide by two, right? Um, if, for example, your um, your power is force times velocity, right, then the uncertainty of the power is to the power as the uncertainty of the force, right, is to the force plus the uncertainty of your velocity is to your velocity, right? So um, this would be how you do that, right? This is the sort of thing when, when I say do the uncertainty of, I'll need you to show me how you did that because that's what I'm talking about, okay? So that's this is option one, right? 
uh, there's a second option. Um, the second option is that uh, you could determine the spring constant of one of the springs. Now, this sounds really easy, but it's unbelievably difficult um, the way IB wants us to do it. If you are IB, this is what you're going to do. Okay? Ta-da! Okay? If you're IB, you're going to do your very own, you're going to gather your very own data and turn in your very own lab. Okay? Now, you're going to, we're going to do this thing called the, the spring constant graph. Everybody's going to do that. And it involves, you know, making a graph. Here's force and here's the distance. And then these points here have error bars on them, right? And then we're going to, um, we're going to put a best fit line through it. Ooh, that was a crazy line. And we're going to do a steepest line and then, uh, wow, well, oh boy, that's going to be tough to do, right? And then you're going to do the, the, the least steep line and all this crazy stuff. I'm going to show you that, okay? Everybody's going to learn how to do that. Um, and so you're basically just going to do this all by yourself without me holding your hand. Some crazy graph like that, okay? That's like the worst graph ever drawn. Um, but, you know, it's very hard to do this. Okay, and then the, the third option is to just do a lab of your own choosing. And this is just like the force lab, okay? You guys were rolling cans half full of liquids down the hall or adding mass to carts, right? Um, what kids have done, it just has to do with energy, okay? So you need to come up with a lab that has something to do with energy. Classically, what kids have done with this is that they have um, uh, taken like wind-up cars and wound them back a different amount, like three revolutions, four revolutions, five, and seen how far that they go. Um, you'd have to bring in your own wind-up cars for that, right? Um, I've had kids um, drop things from different heights and measured the, the loss of kinetic energy. That, that's sort of dodgy. Um, a real classic one is we have these little mini trebuchets, right? And they do um, the mass of the counterweight, how that affects the uh, range, right? So they put more mass on there and see how, how that affects how far the... Um, the trebuchet goes, but it just has to do with energy. Um, I've had kids take bows, like as in a bow and arrow, and measure the force curve of a bow, right? Um, so these are all very cool things. Uh, just talk to me. Okay, and, and, and uh, we can talk about ideas or whatever if you want to do a lab. And all you would do is, is a procedure with a diagram. It doesn't have to be as fancy as the one you did for the force lab. Uh, a table of your data, a graph, a real graph, not made on uh, notebook paper. Whoever told you that was okay. Um, and then uh, a conclusion, some sort of a conclusion. It doesn't have to be a fancy one, but just a reflection about what the data say. Okay? So think about those three options and, um, and choose one of them. And uh, not next time, but the time after, you'll have time to work on that.